Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are starting uh, this week's uh, session. And uh, we are starting from where we stopped. Uh, last week, we had the technical issues um, which made it impos uh, possible for us to do our session last week. So just like I said, we need to cover up. I gave you people assignments to, to review the, uh, the products we are intent to, to work on as a business analyst. But at this time, I want you people to, to review the product from the user point of view, not as a business analyst, but as a user or as a customer to that product. So that um, you make a review based on what you feel about the product, how do you want the product to be uh, improved. And then from your review, business analysts, we take it up from there and start working on that. So I will go to the product we reviewed and um, I'll share my screen. This is the product I ask you people to review. Um, Roma.com is an application, a social media application, just like uh, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media. But they are young in the market. Uh, they want to uh, gain more users and they want to implement some of the features that users will like. So they want to be uh, user centric. They want to be user oriented. They want to, to come from the agile point of view, looking at what the users want, what does our customers want, and then we implement what our customers want. Not um, we a social media company, uh, whatever we want, the customers will like it. No, we want customers to tell us what they like and then we work for them. So that is, that is it. So I've seen some of your review. We'll still go into those uh, review. Look at the, the user interface. Now we are trying to be um, very user friendly. I don't know if uh, some of you know that for now, you can use your Facebook account to, you can use your Facebook account to log into Romart. So this is Romart now, and I'm going to log into Romart using my Facebook account. Look at uh, Facebook uh, um, icon here. Instead of using my username and the password, I'm going to use my Facebook. Uh, profile or Facebook account. Yeah, you can see I'm in Romart now using my Facebook uh, uh, account. And that is it. So these are the, the, the functionalities we have for now. From here, you can see some of the functionalities. That's how it is for now. But we want to upgrade it. We want to improve it. So as a user, which I've seen so many of you have uh, registered and uh, logged in and used that, start using it. Yeah, that's very good. These are the things I want you to do, to use it as a user. Then we'll come to, um, uh, to the point when you start working on this product as um, business analysts and project managers. Now, there are some areas, I don't know if you, you guys know that it do exist, which I'm going to uh, explore a bit so that you understand the full functionalities. Like here, let's look at what we can achieve from here. From this um, uh, area, you see wallet. We have wallet here. If I click on this wallet. This gives you the ability to send money 
to people and receive money or withdraw money. So that is some of the functionalities which you don't want. Here, you can send money. Like now, this is 1,000. If I have up to 1,000, I can up to, I can say, but I don't have, this is, I just have only $50 here. So this is the functionalities which this uh, application have got, which you don't know. Now you know. So you can use it to send money, if you want to send it to someone, you can see these are names of all the people here. I can choose to send no money to any of all these people. Okay, let me say I can send money to, to Noel. Now I'll type, um, let me send uh, $5 to Noel and continue and I'll click successfully money was sent to Noel. Now, if you, if Noel goes to his account, Noel will see that I've sent him um, $5 and that's how it works. Yeah, congrats to Noel for getting um, $5 uh, from me. So that's how it works. So. Another thing is um, you can use this to uh, make advertisement. If you want to advertise, you create your advertisement here from your wallet, you pay. And you create your advertisement. So from here, you create your advertisement, add media, type everything you want to type from here, and you, you pay. And your adver advertisement will come up like any product you want to, to, to promote. That's it. So another thing I want to, to bring to your notice is from this uh, uh, general setting from notification here, you can send, set your notification. Uh, from here, invitation link, you can copy link, you can generate a link here and take it to your Facebook account or any social media or anywhere you want to invite like a group in Facebook. You can generate a link, go to Facebook, paste it, and then you can use it to invite users from there that's it another one is uh, social link you can integrate your um, uh, facebook account with these like some of your activities in facebook you can be getting it from here from this link and um you you guys already know about all this thing because you've already used it uh, the verification here, as we progress, a time will come when we start uh, 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 verifying users with um, ID, maybe passports, uh, voters registration, or to make sure that they are real users. This is a, a means of fighting a kind of uh, uh, fraudsters. And uh, yeah, information like if you want to check the people following you or some of the anything, you can download them from here. Another one that I really want, like some people were asking about uh, two-factor authentication. We have it here, so but uh, it's not enabled. We will we'll enable it when we need to do that, but it's not uh, so important for to enable it for now. Another thing is that you can use this to make money. Uh, this to have affiliate program here where you can um, invite users and you make money from the, the people invite. So for now, you can end up to one, one pen. Uh, from inviting your friends. For instance, if you want to invite your friends from um, or users from Facebook, you can click here. And anybody that's uh, registered through your link, through your affiliate link, you make this amount of money. If you click here, it take you to Facebook. Like here, it take you to Facebook. 
and it will ask you where do you want to make the code from here do you want to share on a friend timeline in a group share in an event or share on a page you know like this our page um all the pages let me see here There, from there, you can share it on this page. And that's how um, it works. Now, you can share on, um, on WhatsApp. If, um, if I'm using my WhatsApp, uh, my mobile phone, I'll just share it on, the, on our group. You can share on um, Twitter. Yeah, you can just open my and share it on my Twitter account. You can share on LinkedIn. That's it. I can just log into LinkedIn and share. And people can start um, signing up. Anybody that sign, signed up, you can equally share on, um, on uh, Telegram. You know, anybody that is signing on through this affiliate link, you make money. And again, another thing here is that any post you create here, you make points, which is money. You know, any activity you, you exhibit here, translate to money. And this is what we want to do to keep users busy and happy why using this application so as a business analyst i want you to understand the product that you are about to work on very well that's why i'm just uh, showing you all this functionality all these hidden functionalities that you need to know about um, this post about this um, application so that is it for now about um a raw mouth. Yeah, you've got a very beautiful picture here, and I would like it. Yeah. Comment here. Yeah. So we'll go. I'll stop sharing. I'll stop sharing this screen. I will go back to um, our lecture slide. We've seen how our product that we are going to be working on as business analysts. Now we are a user. You've seen how uh, it's going to be. And uh, let me check one thing before we start. Um, our this improper. Uh, yeah, this is our Facebook, um, my Facebook page. Let's see. Okay, this is the assignment that I gave to you people. Um, look at our statistics. As you can see, the, what the users want from the point of view of a user of this application, Romart. You know? So we are going to be agile, uh, minded, agile minded is uh, we need to look at what the customers want and from what customers want. Because if um, I, I was meant to just uh, improve on this uh, product, maybe I would just say, okay, let me implement a movie as number one because I, I, I just feel that it's going to be very good. People coming here to watch movie that you know, 
or I will implement a game, games where people can come and play a game. But that's what I feel like maybe as the owner of the, the or as a company that what this is what makes uh, sense. But from this analysis, you can see that what I'm thinking is not what the users are thinking. And if I implement a movie and games, people will not um, start, will not um, like the product. People will not use the product. So looking at what the users want, you can see users want, uh, you want to have pages and their jobs. Pages is a situation where you can create a page for your business, for your, uh, for your, 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 your product or anything, and start promoting your product, start promoting your business. So your page is your business online. Your page is your business in social media. And from your page, you can create jobs. You can create any kind of interaction with the people that is, uh, people following your page are your customers. They are your fans. And I can see that this is what the, the, the users want because I can see that here, the users here is a uh, business minded. So, and we need to respect what the users want if we want our product or our business to grow. So that is it. So we are going to, um, now I'm acting as a product owner. As a product owner, I've done my requirement gathering and from my requirement gathering, I can see that what the users want is to implement a page as the number one epic list. Number one in their epic list is product page and the ability to create jobs in the product page, just like in LinkedIn. All these jobs, all of us are seeing in LinkedIn, all these jobs are being created from the company pages. They, they first create a page on LinkedIn and then from their page, they create jobs and all of us start applying and getting jobs. So the number one, uh, that is number one is pages. Then the number two is a classified marketplace. People want a situation where they will come to social media, they'll start selling their product. You know, people following them on their account, on their pages, they, they are customers. And if you are selling shoe, instead of uh, going to start a, a, a website, a social media, um, a, an e-commerce website, which is very costly, you can come here and start selling it here free of charge. You know, your customers can see it. You, you have the, the ability to create a product and add the uh, price, price tag. And customers can come and see it and uh, be able to buy. So the next one is group. Group is ability to people to collaborate. You know, people sharing ideas, interests in, in social media. These are things what people want. And then for people who are planning to become um, bloggers, then this will give you the, the, the ability. You don't need to go and start a blogging website and then integrate it with, um, with social media, like what is going on in Facebook and most of the bloggers, they have their own blog, the blog, blog website, and then they will integrate their blog. Most of all these news, uh, news uh, uh, agencies, they create a, a blog on, uh, they, they create a blog website and integrate it in Facebook. And then from their blog, they post it. When they post on their blog page, uh, website, it will then uh, come up to, to face, uh, Facebook, which requires uh, integration. Not everybody has that, not every user has got this uh, technical ability to create a blog and integrate it. And again, it's costly to create a blog. And maybe because when you create a blog, you need to host your, your website. You need to pay for the host. It's not for free. But if you have blog here, you can start a business here. You can become a blogger, just like uh, every other, like uh, all these big, big like uh, uh, Punch newspaper, uh, Linda IKG. Uh, these are the kind of thing you can start as a blogger here. And movies, ability, maybe you have a movie here, you can, people can start renting movie, watching movie, and the game, people can just be playing games and watching, you have some games you, you bid money to play. 
but from what the uh, users want. This is the priority. This is the epic list and has been prioritized like this. This is what the user wants. And if you are going to implement all these things, we are looking at implementing all these features. But this is a prioritization, which we are going to see very soon um, in business analysis. That's prioritization. This is how it's prioritized. This is number one. And this is number two. And this is number three. So if you are going to handle it as a project using a um, um, uh, prioritization metrics as a business analyst, we are going to use um, number one is going to be pages and jobs, class, uh, classify marketplace two, group um, three. This is how it's going to work. So that's how a business analyst work in real time. But also we are, what we are doing here is practical. I, the, the way I teach, I like to, to practicalize the way I teach, and that's the best way to learn. It's not just speaking a, a grammar, telling you this in theory. You know? So this is what I'm just exhibiting is the job of a product owner. I've done my requirement gathering as a product owner, and it has been prioritized. So this is it. So the next thing now is to take it to to my team, project team, and tell them, this is all my stakeholders. This is the requirement I've gathered from users. Then I need, as a product owner, I still need to, to gather requirements from my um, other stakeholders. They need to still make their input. But from the user's point of view or customer's point of view, I've gathered my requirements because this is what I needed to know. I needed to find out what the people want. And people thought this is what they really want. It's, um, it's very clear from the votes here. This one scored 48 votes. This one scored at five votes. This one scored uh, 21 votes, 10 votes, and five votes, four votes. It's very clear, you know? So we have to go back and then um, continue with our lecture slide. I'll pause this uh, video and then uh, oh, it's not even necessary. Uh, is there any question before going to the lecture slide? Uh, so, Sir Raymond. Yeah, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. How are you? Yeah, yeah, very fine, sir. Thank you very much for this rare opportunity. It's regarding the pool you gave us. I was thinking if you could add education to it, where we can actually have a, a place, since we have a blog and all those movie games, marketplace, I was thinking if a place for education where people, where a course like this, which you are currently taking us through, can easily be uploaded and maybe generate sales from there on this wrong mouse. It's just an observation on the pool. I was thinking you should have added it. So it's... Okay, okay. I've, uh, I've noted that what you mean is just like a LinkedIn link. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I would think I'll, I'll, it's, it's noted. Thank you, sir. Because uh, it's, all these things are very good because the issue with raw math is that um, we are working at the, uh, well, what we are doing here is that very soon, so many of us, as soon as we finish here, uh, so many of you will be working um, with raw math on permanent basis because we are looking at is a, is a, is a pure startup which is meant to generate employment. Because the main purpose of this uh, university is that after um, you are studies from university, you create a job. So you need to create job for yourself. So we are looking at once you are here, we are looking at those who are interested and those who are serious, who have something to bring on the table and how to take it to the next level and use it to transform our society in Nigeria. We don't have any more in Africa. We don't have a, a serious 
social media. Social media becomes um, an industry when Facebook started. And since then, few giants have been dominating the markets like Facebook. Um, um, we know the few giants that are dominating it. And none of them is coming from Africa. If you can look, look at it, TikTok is coming from China, you know? But if you look at the, 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 the population of Africa, we are among the people that are using social media. And all these things, we don't have it. And all this money is that we are making money. The, the kind of activity we create for social media, we are making money for the owners, the Westerners. So we need to start looking at developing our own markets. And this is what we are here to do. Before, banks used to be like this. The banks we used to follow before used to be backless banks. And that is, um, today we call it First Bank. Everybody used to follow Barclays Bank in Nigeria. But we find out that we are making money for the Barclays Bank. And that's how other banks started. Now we have so many banks in Nigeria. And we are even more banks are coming because of economic activity. We have a lot of economic activities going on. So that is why we, have, we cannot leave social media industry for few people to hijack. It's a multi-billion, multi-trillion dollar industry and only few people are managing it. So I want you to be serious here because I want you, this job you are thinking about, uh, once you finish this course, you can start um, looking for job in um, Upwork and uh, Fiverr. Good and fine, you are going to do that, but you have to look in house. Look back room. This is opportunities. We have to use this digital uh, solution to create job for ourselves. All these things we are the way like all these social medias. They should have a, a physical presence in Nigeria, but they don't have. Like here in London, Facebook, they have their their the office in London, but they don't have in Nigeria. But we Nigerians we use social media more than the UK people. So why shouldn't they have? So we are going to capitalize on all these opportunities to create our own markets. So these are the things. And we are here, it's, it's all about what you have, the, the, the interest you have and how serious you are can make you to even become a part owner of this company. So that is it. For now, let's go back to uh, our business analysis. But all these things I'm saying is part of what we are here for. No question again, I'll go um, to the, um, the proper lecture for tonight. So, um, this is where we, we stopped. Um, this is where we stopped on Thursday. And uh, we are going to start here today. List of um, stakeholders in business analysis. These are the, the list of stakeholders in business analysis. If you, are, if, you are, if you are doing a business analysis, these are the people you need to, to have in mind to work with. They are your stakeholders as a business analyst. As you can see, business analyst comes first. Business analyst is responsible and accountable for the execution of uh, these activities. All these things I've been saying, the analysis, generating requirements, transforming requirements, managing requirements, this is the job of a business analyst. You are the person that will drive the change. But you need to work with a group of people called stakeholders. You can't work in isolation. And those stakeholders, from the agile uh, point of view or from agile mindset, the number one stakeholder is the customer because their product is uh, for the customers. Customer uses 
or may use products or service services produced by the uh, enterprise. Just like um, what I've demonstrated a few minutes ago, you people um, gave your review about raw mouth as customers and users. So, and me as a business analyst, I've taken um, account of, um, I've taken notes of your review and I will use your review to work on improving uh, the product. So, domain subject matter experts. Domain subject matter expert is somebody who is using uh, a solution or you have been using that product from in-house, from that company who knows more about the, the, the product. So for instance, if you are trying to implement uh, customer relationship management, the CRM we need to implement if it's in a company, there are some company that is managing that CRM called the uh, administrator. Is a CRM administrator. He is the subject matter expert. He should be able to know more about the, the product. So, and if we need to generate requirements, we need to work with the person. We need to work with the um the CRM administrator. For instance, if it's, uh, this raw mouth, we have admin, somebody who does the day-to-day -day management of the uh, rawmouth.com. It doesn't manage itself. Somebody is doing it, which is a uh, uh, raw mouth is developed on content, based on content. So we can classify it as a content management system. So there must be somebody who is working administering on that uh, content management? Who can, like as an admin in terms of uh, security, in terms of uh, resolving issues with the customers or the user? So, as a business analyst, yes, I've consulted the customers to find out their, their views about this product, but still, I need to, to consult the person, the admin that is managing this uh, solution to find out uh, what's his problem. How, what is the problem and how, what, um, how do he, uh, does he want us to solve the problem? What uh, does the person want the, the, the subject matter expert want to see in, on the improvement list that will make them happy doing their job? They have more knowledge. Another person is end user. End user is, same, is the same thing um, like subject matter experts. But the, the only thing with end user is that end user might just be using the solution, just like um, a salesperson or a sales rep using customer's uh, management uh, solution to manage uh, accounts of uh, as, um, user accounts. So, the salesperson might not really be in the position of uh, an administrator, but he is using the product as well. So he must be able to know some certain things that can help him to do his job as a sales or a, a marketing executive using uh, CRM. So that's another way I want you to, to look at an um, end user. So when we come to, um, subject matter experts, we have two types of uh, subject matter experts. We have a domain subject matter experts. These are individuals with in-depth knowledge of a topic uh, relevant to the business, the business need or solution uh, scope. But when we come to implementation subject matter experts, is an, uh, uh, um, an expert. Uh, is an expert who specializes in uh, implementing uh, one or more solution or more component, just like a business uh, analyst. So 
a business analyst who has been uh, working on um, a particular solution like uh, CRM or content management uh, system is an implementation subject matter expert. So if there is someone who has been working on that uh, particular solution in the company, you need to consult the person to know how he has been doing his implementation and how you can work with the person. Another stakeholder is uh, operational support. Operational support is responsible, responsible for the day-to-day -day management and the maintenance of a system. So just like uh, when you implement a solution, for instance, CRM, after the implementation, there's what we call the post-implementation review. During the post-implementation review is how that solution is going to be managed, how it's going to be maintained over time. Because all these things is just like a car, it's just like a house. When you buy a car, you, you continue to maintain the car for the car to be very effective, uh, to, for the car to be serving, serving you very well. When you build a house, you need to keep on maintaining the house. If you, if you don't maintain the house, before you know it, termites and other things will just destroy the house. So if operational support is the person that's responsible for day-to-day -day management and maintenance of that solution. Like um, if it's a raw mouth, there's somebody who will make sure that this uh, solution is working. Somebody who will make sure that uh, uh, the hosting, the, the subscription and the everything, everything is in there. Make sure that it keeps on running, not that one day people will log into the site and they find out that the site has um, collapsed, it stopped working. These are the, the things. And then project manager. After everything, after gathering everything and uh, documenting everything, and uh, we agree that, uh, yes, we need to implement uh, this, um, uh, some of these uh, features we've identified with our uh, requirement gathering from the, uh, the customer and the subject matter expert, we've agreed that, yes, we need to uh, implement uh, uh, SUSU features. Then we'll bring everything to the table of a project manager, who we then uh, make sure that uh, we, uh, there is uh, enough budgets, uh, we manage the budgets, look at the risk involved, and then make sure that we, as we are starting the project, he manages the project. You all of you are project managers already, so you know what I'm talking about. So the project manager needs to articulate the whole responsibility, the whole task, and make sure that it can be delivered on time and on budget. Then it did not end there. We have regulators. Anything we are doing, we need to look at the regulatory guidelines. Like you, you, you see this, um, our Roma.com. Yeah, we need to look at the regula regulatory guidelines. For instance, we are gathering um, um, users' uh, data. And you, all of us know that there is rules governing um, data management, data issue, data um, how you use uh, end users or service users data. Like in UK, you have a GDPR regulation, data protection. So we need to equally uh, gather requirement from such people on how best to make sure we don't uh, fall a victim of the, uh, this regu regulatory agency. In UK, we have an ICO. ICO will help you to manage your, your service users' data or, and, or um, customers' data without breaching any rules. So these are some of the, the 
the stakeholders involved. Then another person is the sponsor who is initiating the, this effort. Who is the initiator? So the initiator is the, the person uh, sponsoring the, the, the project. It can be somebody working in a company, it can be in-house, or it can be a client, you know? Here, um, Romox as a company can be the, the sponsor because uh, we are working on, his, on their product. So they, they need to, to, they have someone representing them as a company. So they are the clients. So these are the, the sponsors. The sponsor is the client who owns the products we are trying to improve. Then we have uh, suppliers. Who are the suppliers? If we are implementing CRM, we know there is vendors. You have three major, we have a, look here, let me say three major vendors like a Microsoft, um, SAP, and uh, Salesforce. These are giants in the market, vendors. They are the suppliers. These are the kind of people we are going to look at. They are the, if you are going to use their, their products, these are the suppliers we are going to look at. We're going to analyze different suppliers to, to know the best vendor. So I want you to, 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 to be looking at suppliers as vendors. They are the same thing. Then testers. Tester is responsible for determine, uh, determining how to verify to make sure that the solution meets the requirement defined. When I'm implementing the solution, before a solution starts, after defining the, the user story, the user story is the, the piece of software you're applying, you are trying to implement, we call it user story. We already know that we have treated that. Then, the next thing you need to do after the user story is to create acceptance criteria, the benchmark. It must reach, it must meet that benchmark before it can be accepted. So it's the duty of the tester to be testing and measuring every user story to make sure that it meets the acceptance criteria, which is the benchmark. So the list, these are the list of the people you need to work with as a business analyst. You know, so this is what you have to, to, to have in mind. So, so there, that's why there is need for, for, for this uh, collaborative skill. You need to have this collaborative skill, you know, stakeholder management skill, because you can't work alone. You know, these are the, the people you need to work with. You need to manage them for risk. Uh, you need, they, they are all of them come with their own risk. So you need to devise a means to manage them. Man that's why you need to equally know how to manage your risk very well. So these are the leads. And then we'll come to look at the skills you need to start managing all these people and all the requirements and everything involved. And that's it, these are the skills. Business analysts, these are the skills you need to have to be able to to be a good business analyst. Number one is the analytical thinking and problem solving skill. That is the major skill of a business analyst because you are coming to solve problems. That is your number one skill. Yeah, you need to have so many other skills, but this is number one. You must know how to analyze a situation, a problem, and the profile solution. And that is having analytical thinking and problem solving thinking. You need to be creative, creative thinking, decision making, <clears throat> learning. Decision making is that you need to know how to make 
quality decision. You need to be creative. When you be creative, you need to, to know the best solution using the best um, techniques, match techniques with uh, problems. So that's being creative. You should be able to know the best because you have so many techniques. So you cannot use them uh, because they are all techniques in business analysis. You, you match wrong technique with a um, wrong, uh, wrong uh, problem. So you need to match the right technique with right, with the, so you need to be a square uh, peg in a square a hole. That is being creative, creative thinking and decision making. So you need to be able to do that. And then learning. It means that you need to be able to make research. You need to learn. You need to read. A business analyst reads a lot. When you are making research, you need to read so many um, authorities, articles, pertaining a, 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 a product you are planning to make sure that you are on top of the 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 you, you, are, you are on top of the, the trending events on that particular uh, product or that particular industry or the, the solution you are trying to implement. You need to have a problem sol solving uh, ability, which I've spoken about. System thinking. System is a ability to, to manage different systems. You know, in business analysis, you are most of the these products or applications they don't work in isolation. You need to know how systems work together. So when you are implementing the solution, you need to think about the future of that uh, solution. How scalable the, 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 the solution uh, can be. That's why you might see a, a, a solution might look so beautiful. But it's not um, what the, the organization is looking at. That's why so many organizations, they are looking at uh, some solutions like uh, Microsoft. Uh, it's costly, but in future, it, it continues to give you what you want. SAP is very costly, but it's very, very robust. That as your company is growing, it keeps on containing you. It keeps on expanding is, a, is like an elastic, you got good elasticity, so that the more you grow, the more it expands. These are the systems we need to be looking at. Conceptual, conceptual thinking, the ability to, to concept ideas very quickly, and the uh, visualization thinking like here is a after all this, you should be able to, to put some of these uh, ideas into visual representation, like uh, graphs, charts. We need to be able to map them using like, uh, we've spoken about uh, some of these um, tools like uh, Visio, Draw.io, Lucidchart. These are the tools you can use to, to give visual expression about your requirement. So these are the skills you need to have. So when you talk about analytical thinking and problem solving thinking, it's not just like that. It's very, very, just like you see, all these um, points I have uh, enumerated is a collection of, when you say analytical thinking and problem, this is a collection of analytical and problem solving thing, um, uh, scale. Then the next one is a behavioral, uh, skills. When you talk about behavioral, it's a character. You need to be at the ethics. You need to be, you know, discipline, ethical. And uh, uh, another one is uh, personal accountability. You need to be able to account for your action. Any, anything you, you, you do within a team, you have to be Account, you have to, uh, to account for it. And for you to be, uh, know, be very good uh, accountability, it's good to use a uh, racing matrix, 
we've, we've spoken about, we've, we've used racing metrics before, I think it, uh, during the project management, we'll still come to all these um, techniques as well. Racing metrics will give you the, uh, the charts where, and from there you'll be able to know what is your responsibility, what are you accountable for? Because in a, in a team, you must be accountable for something. Otherwise, you have to be trustworthy. It's a very good, uh, um, a very important uh, uh, point or uh, skills in um, agile methodology, more especially in Scrum. Trustworthiness is very key. If there is no trust in a team, it's very difficult for the team to, to, to move to the next level because no one trusts what the other person is doing. So that's it. So you need to be organizational time management. Organization, you need to be organized. You need to manage your time very well. In order to, organizational means that you should be able to plan your, your activities. You need to, to break, use a pro, uh, breakdown structure to organize your, your projects. Organize your time, your activities, your deliverables. That is what I mean by being an organization. You have to be organized. You know, that's what organization means in this uh, con in this uh, context. And time management. When you organize, you break down your structure, then you allocate time in order to meet your timeline deadlines. Everything in project management is all about deadlines. No activity runs indefinitely. It must be time bound. And the finally within this uh, behavioral characteristics is adaptability. You need to adapt to changes. You need to, because um, uh, you are going to meet different people. So you must be able to adapt to different environments. You must be able to adapt to cross-functional teams. Because you are, you are not working alone. So there's need for adaptability. Then the next one is uh, business knowledge. As a, as, a, as a business analyst, you must have a good business acumen. You need to understand your, your, any industry or market you are trying to implement a solution or trying to work on. You must be very good um with the understanding of that market of that industry so taking social media industry for instance as we are working now to implement uh or to improve on products uh a social media product you need to understand the market very well you need to look at the competing the the the, the leading forces in that market the competition the best you know, these are the things. If you are looking at um, customer relationship management, CRM, you need to understand the market. You need to understand who are the key drivers in this uh, market. And uh, to understand the market, there is um, um, so many uh, independent uh, analysts that help to, to review markets, like uh, Gartner. Gartner reviews all the markets. They give you the, the authoritative statistics about every, uh, on how every market stands. So if you are looking at uh, uh, understanding um, a product or the, the position of that product, the statistics, the rating, the review, then you need to, the number one place you need to go is uh, Gartner. As a business analyst, all of you need to know Gartner very well. You need to, to write it down because he, he, he knows all the markets. You can't do without the knowledge of Gartner as a business analyst. That is, a, it covers being a business acumen and industrial knowledge. Gartner will give you the industrial knowledge and the business acumen you need to understand. Uh, you need to understand any markets or any industry. 
organization knowledge, you need to under, understand the, the organization you are trying to work on. If you are, they are bringing you to, to work with, um, implement a solution for MTN telecommunication, you need to understand MTN telecommunication very well. You need to understand their structure, their vision. What are they planning to achieve? We need to look at their, their company, the, their, the company objective to make sure that whatever you are, you are, you are trying to do is still working within the objective of the company. Then the solution knowledge, you need to understand the solution you are trying to implement. If you are trying to implement customer's relationship management, CRM, we need to understand the implementation. How do we implement it? Because the way you implement um, software development is, the, uh, is different from implementing uh, a vendor-based uh, solution like uh, uh, CRM. The way you, you, you don't implement them with the same pattern or the same methodology. So you need to understand how uh, they are being implemented. If you are, for instance, they, if you are implementing um, SAP uh, CRM, they have a way of implementing their own, their own solution. And there's uh, some, um, Microsoft, they have a way of implementing their own solution. And um, Salesforce, they have a way of implementing their own solution. So you cannot use the way you implement Salesforce to implement um, SAP, although most of them are highly related. But it's very good that you understand how every solution works. And then methodology. You must know the methodology the companies uh, want to use, and then the best methodology for any particular solution. We've uh, spoken about methodology in uh, project, uh, project management. So you should know more about uh, project methodology. When you talk about methodology, you are talking about project methodology like uh, Agile, um, waterfall and the rest of them. Then communication skill. Communication skill is very important. Communication is not just uh, speaking good English. You might be speaking good English, but the person you are speaking, you are, you are working with is not an English uh, speaker. So it means that that uh, good English doesn't make sense. So you must find a way to meet the person you are working with. Now, all, every, all of you are now uh, buying or uh, looking at working remotely. Remote work internationally, if you are working remotely on a global project, there's a need you might be working with Indians. Most of them are the, the developers. Most developers come from Indians. So you must, understand them. Their accent is quite different from English uh, people's accent. Although everybody is speaking English, but it's different. Nigeria, if you, for instance, if you are here in UK trying to work with Nigerians, we have Nigerian accents. An Englishman might not really understand what you are talking about because of your accent. You might be speaking good English, but your accent might make it difficult for them to understand you. So it's not just about speaking good English. It's about trying to find a way to make sure that the person you are working with is, uh, is understanding what you are saying. You know, if the person, if, if you find out that it must be both of you are from different areas, you, you can't understand, maybe the accent becomes a barrier, then you might decide to use a, a written communication to pass, um, to communicate. So here we have a verbal communication. 
we have non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication can be um, body language, you know? You can um, use your eye as a contact to communicate. That is a, a communication. So you can use um, uh, written communication. If the person is not, uh, if verbal communication is not, you can use written communication, you can start chatting. Both of you can be chatting with the mentee that passing the, the right uh, information. That is communication. Then listening is a very good skill in communication. A business analyst should be a very good listener. More especially when you are facilitating a workshop. You need to, when you ask a question, you need to re relax and try to listen. Not when you ask a question and the, the respondent have not finished, you just, you don't interrupt. It's not a good, uh, it's not a good attitude of a business and uh, interrupting people when they are, they are speaking uh, in a workshop or when you are generating. Try to give people time to finish what they are saying. Even if they are not making sense, don't stop them. Interaction skills. Interaction skills means um, you need to interact with people because you are working with team. So you need to facilitate um, a workshop. You need to facilitate um, requirement gathering. You need to. So it's. It, Interaction skill is uh, very key. Like facilitation, facilitation means uh, trying to um, organize um, an event like a requirement gathering or workshop. Leadership and influencing is very good. You need to be, because um, when you are when you are generating a requirement, you need to, to to have good leadership skill and influencing. You need to to be able to influence your stakeholders. You know to support your 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 change your change initiative because most of the time you as a business analyst you are initiating the change. So and you manage the change. Most of this time, when there is a, a situation of change. You must you know, have uh, challenges like uh, people opposing your, your, your change initiative. When you have opposition, you must find a way to influence them, to buy them over, to support your, your change initiative. Then another one is teamwork. You need to know how to work as a team more especially working in a cross-functional team. Cross-functional team is that these are team of professionals, not only business analysts. So you must have to work with them. So many of uh, uh, people in there, most, most of the people in the team might be different professionals. So they might not have the same mindset. Developers and project managers, they have different mindsets. Project managers, they're always thinking about um, deliver project timeline, how to make sure that in this timeline, how to make sure that they work on their on, on resources. But developers, they are more interested in making sure that their code is working. You know, that is it. So you must have you no know, the way you manage project managers is the way you, you, you interact with uh, is different from, from the way you interact with developers. So and other um, people involved, like uh, let's say the regulatory agencies, other stakeholders that are external to that project. So they might not have interest in that project. It's not their business. All their business is make sure that you comply with the regulation. They can just stop the project without even like here in UK, most of the, the um, let me use construction industry now. 
they can just uh, the, the the health and safety officials they can just come to uh, your, your construction site and just stop work if you are if you are not following the, the best practice and just that's it it's not their business it's not even who it doesn't they don't care even if it's a multi-trillion business or who who is investing in the it's not their business but see, it's, a, it's a big deal for you because you know how much that is being committed to that project and their job might be on, on, on the line if the, the project is being halted. So you must find a way to interact with different stakeholders to make sure that you drive your project, make sure that the, 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 the initiative is working. Then after all these things, then you need to, to know how to, to use tools and technologies. When we are talking about tools and technologies in, in business analysis, we are talking about tools like um, uh, Visio, which are used for data, used for um, for modeling and um, visualization, like uh, Visio, like uh, Lucid Chart, like uh, Draw of IO. These are some of the tools you'll be using as a business analyst. Then you need some other tools like um, Power BI for data, uh, data modeling and data visualization, we say. But then that might be if you are specialized, a specialized business analyst, maybe you are specialized as a data analyst, you know, like, some company might require you to know how to use all those things as a, as a conventional business analyst. You know, but as a business analyst, both um, business business analyst and technical business analyst, if you know how to use Visio, if you know how to use um, Draw.io, if you know um, Lucid Charts, these are some of the key um key uh, tools that you need there are so many others like um if you are trying to to do a wire framing or mock-up there's other tools involved which you are going to use but we are going to go into details about tools and technologies uh, in business analysis we're going to treat it as a topic so let us not waste so much time about um, tools but the main thing is you know that these are the, the kind of tools I'm talking about, which you have used. You have used uh, Lucid Chat before. You have used Draw.io before. Yeah, so you, have, you might not be using um, Project Labor or Microsoft Project here because uh, this is a business analysis. If you know how to use it, good, but you might not be able to use it in business analysis. That one is project management too. But there are some tools you can use even as a business analyst, and as a, which is a very important. And they are um, Visio, Lucid Chart, um, Draw.io. Draw.io is very good because I'm always talking about because it's a, it's is is hundred percent free, and it can give you it can give you all the all the functionalities you can get from Microsoft VC. Lucid Chat is free, but you know, at some extent, it, it requires um, a premium uh, license for you to get some of the things you want. But I don't think it's so in, in Broad.io. So as we are proceeding, we might be using, we might be using more of Broad.io than Visio, or if some of you are, uh, if you choose to um, pay for for it, or if you keep on resub resubscribing for the premium context. So, but for now, let's just leave it here until when we get to tools and technology. We'll talk more about that. So, um. Now, what we are going to look into now is the 
we are now gradually stepping in, into the, the integrity of business analysis. Uh, we have to look at the business analysis core concept model. So what are the core concepts, the model in business analysis? What are the areas, the, 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 the focus, the, the main, like the structure? Number one is change. Because everything we are talking about in business analysis is change. When you have a problem, it's talking about change. Solution is about change. So this is the act of transformation in response to a need. That is what changed me. A transformation in response to a need. When there is a need, there is a change. So change works to improve the performance of an enterprise. That is a change. Then we'll come to need. Need is a requirement. That's how I want you to understand need in this uh, context. It's a requirement. A problem or opportunity to be addressed. Need can cause change by motivating stakeholders to act. So when there is a need, there is a problem. And to solve that problem, they start looking for requirements that will help them to solve that problem. So that's it. So the next is solution. A specific way of satisfying one or more need. And satisfying one or more requirements in a context. A solution satisfies a need by resolving a problem faced by stakeholders. So at the end of the day, when you are looking for uh, the first thing is, as the business analyst, you come and say, this is our problem. Okay, you say, this is the problem. What do you need to do? You need to consult the stakeholders to find out the, the requirement. That is to, to find out the need, what you need to solve the, 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 the problem. And after generating the, the, the requirement, the next thing is then, you have to transform that requirement into solution. And they see how they are all linked together. So then solution. So requirement brings you down to the solution. You can have so many requirements. You can have requirement, but there are so many solutions available with that requirement. So then that's why solution management is still important. So I have to try to look at uh, different factors in order to select your solution uh, carefully. It means solution is the technology, software. So you need to select the, the right software or the right technology that will help you to address the need. Then we are looking at, after then, we look at stakeholder. Stakeholder, a group or individual, with a relationship to the change, the need, or the solution. They are the people driving the change. So they have a relationship with that need. They have relationship with the solution. So you need to, to validate every step you take. You need to consult them to take any step because they are the people that you are working for. They are the people that, uh, uh, it requires that solution. So you need to make sure that what you are doing is satisfying their need. Then value. Value is the what, the importance or the usefulness of something to a stakeholder within a content. So your need of your solution must be of value to the stakeholder. If you, 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 you provide a solution and it's not valuable to them, then that solution doesn't make sense. Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who that um, solution is from. Doesn't matter is the, the, the highest vendor, the highest rated vendor by Gartner, you know, 
it doesn't matter if it's the SAP or Microsoft or, or, or service, uh, service now. These are powerful, powerful vendors, service now or, or Salesforce. It doesn't matter. It must be of value to the stakeholder. If uh, it's not valuable to the stakeholder, it doesn't solve their problem, then it's valueless. Then context. This is the circumstances that influence, that, uh, that influence are influenced by and provide understanding of the change. Changes occur within a context. So what is the context? What is the, 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 the circumstances where this um, change is coming uh, about? We can call it a situation. What is what was the situation? Uh, the, uh, let me say the, 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 the best way to de describe context in this uh, here is uh, the situation. What's the situation on ground? So um, this is the core concept model of business analysis. analysis. So if you are working as a business analyst, these are the things you, you have to conceptualize in your mind as a business analyst. You should be a driver whenever you are trying to, to, to solve a, a, a a problem for your client. And that will, um, that is going to bring us to the next topic, which is a uh, requirement, because we're talking about requirement, um, need, 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 which is requirement, change. Everything comes to requirement. Requirement is the, the what it takes to solve a problem. So requirements and uh, business analysis are five and six. This is how I want you to understand it from here. They are they are they are best friends. So you must understand the requirement very well because uh, going forward, all you'll be hearing is the requirement, requirement, requirement. What is requirement? Requirement is a solution. Um, it is a, is a, a piece of uh, information, what it takes to solve um, a solution. And here we have, uh, we're going to look at uh, what is requirement, requirement classification, requirement elicitation, uh, strategy analysis, requirement analysis, uh, requirement uh, design, and uh, requirement management. If you can grab all these things, then you are done as a business analyst. You are a business analyst already. Then let's take it one after the other. So what is requirement? A requirement is a usable, uh, re representation of a need. Requirement focus on understanding what kind of value could be delivered if a requirement is fulfilled. So that is a requirement. You see the, the, the definition is very clear. So it doesn't require much explanation. So that's the requirement. And we're going to move into the next um, thing about requirement. And that is um, requirement classification. When you are generating requirements, the requirement uh, is uh, classified into so many categories. We have a um, business requirements. You have stakeholder requirement, you have solution requirements, under solution requirements, you have uh, functional and non-functional requirements, 
then we have a um, transition requirement. Business requirement, statement of goal, objectives, and outcome that describes why a change has been initiated. They can apply to the whole of an enterprise, a business area, or a specific initiative. So what I'm saying here is that a requirement can be the whole enterprise, it can even be the whole uh, organization. It can be even a requirement to, to start up a company. What is the company initiative to start up? Is it required? It can be a whole, or it can be a, a business area. It can just be a part of the business. They are trying to deliver a change, maybe within their human resources. Now, maybe they are trying to implement um, a solution that will help them to manage their, their, their human resources, like uh, um, SAP success factor, which is used for um, um, in management of. Uh, HR. So it can be just like that. Or it can be our popular CRM, just to manage uh, their customers very well. Or it can be specific. So it, it, it can be when you come to um, HR, uh, HR, it can, it can just be a specific part of uh, HR. You know, it can just be to automate a particular part of HR or, or, or um, a particular area within the SAP success factor. It can just be a specific automation. So you see, so that's requirement. It can be small, it can be big, it can be, so it depends on the scope. That's why you only use scope to understand the area of a business requirement. Then we come to uh, stakeholder requirements. This describes the need of stakeholders that must be met in order to achieve business requirements. They may serve as a bridge between business and solution requirements. So that's it. Now, you, we, we, if you get the business requirement, then you must make sure that they all um, correspond to stakeholders' requirements. So you must be looking at what the stake stakeholders want within the context of business requirements. What the business want? Now, business want to implement a CRM. Then you need to ask stakeholders, what kind of CRM do you want to achieve based on the problem you have been having? You see how these two works? Yeah, we want to implement uh, CRM to solve up. That's the business need. That's the business requirement. But the stakeholders need to, uh, you need to understand from the stakeholders so that you understand the kind of CRM that you need to implement. And then when you, when you understand the business, what the, the, the challenges stakeholders are facing, like the users, the end users, the challenges they are facing, their frustration, then you will then look at the best solution within their budget um, to address that solution because there's another thing, the best solution within their budget and within the time frame they are giving you to deliver. So this is how you can see the, the relationship, the core relationship of these three requirements, business requirements, stakeholder requirement, and solution requirement. You see their relationship. That's how it works. Then when you find out the solution requirements, solution requirements describe the capability and qualities of a solution that meets the stakeholder requirement. They provide the appropriate level of detail to allow for the development and implementation of the solution. Solution requirements can be divided into two categories. Now, 
you have um, under solution requirement, you have functional requirements and non functional requirements. The functional requirement of a solution is that thing you can feel, like the functionalities you can feel. It describes the capability that solution must have in terms of behavior and information that the solution uh, will manage. For instance, if you are looking at um, e-commerce um, solution, like e-commerce websites, the functional requirement here will be the ability to search for a product. When you see a product, you add, you add the product on the basket and be able to check out and pay using your, um, your credit card or uh, any other card. That is functional. That is a, is a behavior. It's, a, it's, it's something you can, you can see. This, this activity, you can do it physically. You can see it. Customers can see it, users can see it, can feel it. That is the functional requirement. But there are some uh, requirements that cannot be seen. These are some like security of a website. You might not see it, but it's very, very important. It might be that the, the, the website is, uh, the speed is low. This is a requirement. The ability for a website to be very fast is a requirement, but it's not something you can feel. This, you cannot just uh, see uh, in a website, in a website you see this is the speed of a web. It's, you can't see it, but it's there. It can be uh, scalability of the website, maybe, as the company grows, is this solution, is this kind of website, can it grow as companies grow? Maybe now you can use it to sell three products. What if you decide to be selling 30 products? Or if you decide to turn your website into um, a multi-vendor e-commerce? Can the website carry it? This is a requirement, but you cannot see it. We call it scalability. These are some of the requirements as a business analyst you need to consider when you are implementing a solution. Another one is a transition requirement. Transition requirement describe the, the, the capabilities that the solution must have and condition that the solution must meet to facilitate transition from one current state to the future state but which are not needed once the change is completed. So these are some of the things, the transition requirements. What are the capacity? Transition requirements, does this solution you are trying to implement, like there's some solution you need to implement, can it be sustained that like from this future state to go, Maybe the, the business will continue to, to go on. Or does it mean that during the implementation, we need to shut down operation in order to, play, to, to, to implement this uh, solution? There are some things you need to, to, because if you are implementing a solution for, 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 for organization, it's key to understand how that a solution is going to affect the organization. The solution might need that in order to implement that solution, you need to shut down uh, the whole organization, or you need to shut down the whole process. But some can just be, uh, this, 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 the solution can just be implemented while the other solution you are trying to replace or you are trying to, to improve is continue to work. That is a transition requirement. Then let's uh, look at, um, a requirement elicitation, and I think that will be the last topic for tonight. There's a requirement elicitation. 
just like uh, we said, elicitation is a requirement. Elicitation is requirement gathering. When we are talking about elicitation, I want you to understand. That's why I'm using all of them together. When I I, I, I do elicitation, I'll do a gathering. It's the same thing as uh, I know some of you might uh, know all these things, but I know there are so many junior ones here that are starting uh, their, um, some of them are still in the, on the undergraduate level. So that's why I'm trying to break all these things down so that they will understand it very well as well. So requirement elicitation is the same thing as uh, data collection. Just like uh, uh, what happened in the in the assignment I gave to you people, that is a uh, pure data collection. That is pure requirement elicitation. Is a, a requirement gathering that we just did, but is a survey method that we used. To, to, to gather that requirement. So there are so many ways to collect, um, to do requirement elicitation. A requirement elicitation involves ensuring that the stakeholders have the information they need to provide and that they understand the nature of the activities they are going to uh, perform. It also set a share, a share set of expectation regarding the outcome of the activity. Um, preparation, preparation may be also involved, identify research source, or prepare to conduct an experiment to see if a process uh, change actually, if, if a process change actually result in an improvement. Uh, what I'm trying to talk here is uh, about uh, uh, how to prepare uh, for elicitation. A requirement gathering, the next thing, the first thing you need to do is to prepare for elicitation. You don't just um, go into elicitation. You need to, to set a plan in place. You need to, to consult the stakeholders. You need to let them know you are, you are planning to, to start up a, a requirement gathering. And this is the reason why you are, you are, you are doing this requirement gathering. And um, what you need to achieve after the requirement gathering. All these things are important. You need to state everything. You need to plan how we are going to do it. You need to, to, to study the, the, the technique because there are so many techniques involved. So all these are the areas which is like just planning for your project or planning for your um, deliverable. It's an activity. It's, very, it's a very important activity. So you need to, you need a thorough planning because after, uh, the workshop, you might not really have time to go and conduct another workshop. You might not, the stakeholders, they might not have time all the time you need them. So when you are planning, you need to make sure that any, 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 any elicitation you conduct is one is one. Because the stakeholders as well, they are busy people. They are not just going to be sitting around waiting for you to come all the time. They, they, you need them. That's why you start having, you start at times, start complaining that the stakeholders are difficult because they might not have time to answer you all the time you want. They are because they have something they are working on. They have their own project as well. So that's why you need to plan for it very well. Uh, during the the time we'll be talking about. Um, techniques in project management. When we come to the um, requirement elicitation, we are going to discuss in details how we are going, how, 
the steps we are going to take to conduct requirement um, a preparation in each technique, because we have different techniques, we have workshop, we have um, uh, survey, we have a site visitation. These are different methods of uh, a requirement uh, gathering. So when we are going to talk about each of them, that's when we are going to discuss in details how we are going to, because it's very important. You need to know that. It's not just uh, um, just uh, to know requirement gathering, uh, planning of uh, how to prepare requirement gathering, just like this. No, you need to know in details how to plan it. Then after uh, preparation, the next thing is to conduct the elicitation. By the time you've uh, planned your, your, this thing, your requirement uh, uh, gathering very well, uh, generated before then you, you must have uh, had, uh, listed all the questions you need to ask during the, the, the requirement gathering and how you are going to gather all your requirements and everything. Then the next thing is to conduct the requirement. This is the uh, one you need to um, describe the work before under stakeholders need and identify potential solution that may need, that may meet those uh, needs. This is a time you start um, um, working with the stakeholders, interacting with them and uh, asking them questions regarding the, the requirement you are trying to, to gather. For instance, you are trying to, to, to implement, um, they're having a problem with their customer, how to manage um, their customers. You know, it's, it becomes very difficult to manage customers and uh, resolving customers um, um, query. They have a lot of backlogs. Just like when, what we saw at the beginning um, during the um, the real estate company, what the problem they're having with the fixing of uh, boilers. So maybe they're having that kind of problems. So, and you need to fix that solution. You need to fix that problem. So, so to conduct elicitation or to, to conduct requirement, the first thing you need is to, you need to ask them, how are they doing it? This is the first thing you need to, to do to, con to conduct. That is call it current state. You need to understand their current state, the way it is uh, um, being done after understanding the problem they are facing. Is the, you, con you ask them, how are you doing it? You need to understand the way they are doing it, uh, which generates all this problem they are having. Then the next thing is to understand, after knowing how they are doing it, then within that process they are doing it, what is the challenges they are facing? That's what you need to do during conducting requirements, um, during the uh, requirement elicitation. After understanding that, the next thing is to understand how do they want it to be so that they will be happy. You know, that is the, 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 the major things you need to look at while conducting requirements. Um, um, Elicitation. So you can see the, the you need to target the to be um, and the, you need to target assist and to be and then the gap analysis. So these are the, the, the key areas you need to, to, to target. You need to target the to be. And uh, you need to cut first the assist and to be. You got you generate requirement, requirement from the way they are doing it. Then you see, ask them how 
the ideal, ideal solution they want. And then from there, you'll be able to do a, a proper gap analysis and find out the best solution to solve their problem. So the next thing is uh, you confirm a licitation result. After you have uh, conducted the licitation, all this uh, conduct a licitation, you are going to treat it in the details with a diagram so you understand it better. It's not just just like because I have a um, different um, topics for all of them. Just like it's going to be under the techniques you are going to use. That's where I'm going to treat all of them. But for now, we just to give you uh, a breakdown overview of uh, a requirement and elicitation. Then the next thing is uh, confirm elicitation results. By the time you've uh, gathered your requirements, you need to cons confirm the result. What it means here is that you need to uh, prepare um, uh, the, after the requirements are gathered, you need to uh, they prepare the data you, you gather, you know, document it, and then send it back to the stakeholders in charge to validate it. They need to make sure, you need to make sure that the data you've collected is uh, what the, uh, the input they gave during the requirement gathering. Because you might, during the, you are recording, you might have started recording the wrong thing. It might be that what they, they are giving, what they said is not what you recorded. So when you prepare a data, you need to send it back for validation to make sure that what you prepared is what they said or what they, the input they made. When they are happy, or if there is correction, this is time to make corrections. But if they are happy, then good. You move to your requirement analysis. So when they, 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 uh, they are happy, you move to requirement analysis. It's the, during the requirement analysis that you then start um, analyzing the requirement you've gathered. This is time you're going to use all these tools like the um, lucid chart to start mapping out the current uh, process. You need to map them out. And then you map out the, the, the future state. And then you look at the, the gap between the current state and the, the future state. These are the gap analysis. I've shown you that before which we are going to look into details because it's a, some of all these things are big, big topics. We need to treat as a topic like requirement analysis, a big topic of its own. So we can't just treat it like this. So these are the things you need to look at. And after you must have done your analysis, requirement analysis, that's that when you, you get your solution. Um, you, you get to a high level requirement, which is because the epic list that's going to be break down into smaller molecules like uh, becoming uh, user stories. So this is it. So from the, the, the map here, you can see it, the task you need is a, uh, from 4.1 is a prepare licitation, 4.2 conduct um, a licitation, 4.3 confirm results, then communicate business analysis information. This one you have start mapping it out. That is communicating it using diagrams. Then during this process, you work with the stakeholders. It's still a task on you need to manage your stakeholders, collaboration. So you need to describe, is describe working with stakeholders to engage them within the overall uh, business analysis process and to ensure that the business analyst can deliver the outcome needed. So within this process, you need to organize your stakeholders, you need to collaborate manage stakeholders very well. So this is 
this is from here you can see the input these are the, the inputs you need to 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 make and from this input into this task we output all this so when you make during after all this task what you get is a elicitation activity plan elicitation results unconfirmed elicitation results confirmed now they the value is validated business analysis information communicated stakeholders engagement you know that's it that's how you prepare for elicitation so as we drive down we we'll keep analyzing all these things in detail. So this is a uh, a breakdown overview of um, requirement elicitation or requirement gathering. So once you, you, it's good to break it down now like this is, it will help you to know what you are doing. And then from even this map, you've seen what you are doing already. You know the stage, you need to do it. And it will make your job so easy. But if you don't do it like this, don't plan it this way. If you don't map it out this way, in a like a, uh, an overview like this that makes it simple, you find it difficult. You find it you be fumbling with a lot of activities. You be mixing up a lot of things. But if you map it out in a in a in a map like this, just like it's showing like this, it's going to be very easy for you. So by the time you keep driving down. You keep on analyzing all these things in details. I'll keep on bringing out the templates you'll be using to be doing all these things. They are very, very easy. If you are working out with a template that shows the way it's done and uh, you're doing it practical, just like I'm, I'm doing it practical for you people, you are not going to, to struggle at all. So I will stop here so that, um, it will not be too much for our head to carry for now. So I will stop sharing and I'll take some questions before we close. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions? Or uh, are we sleeping? Hello. Shall we are not sleeping. Wow, well, I can hear you. Hi, so, sir. So you, so you guys. You're not sleeping. Hello, sir. So everything, uh, uh, everything is quite understandable. Yes, so far. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to accumulate them. Okay. I'm happy that uh, yeah, I'm, I, uh, you guys are understanding me very well. So. So that is it for tonight. Um, and um, yeah, well, we've uh, known our products we'll be working on, which is wrong mouth. We'll keep exploring. I encourage you people to keep exploring all those um, hidden, hidden functionalities, even about the, the business areas where one can make money and the rest of them and we we'll keep on looking at how we keep improving it so this is going to be the product we are going to be working on um even after here so we we'll have a product to work on already so uh, like what you guys are doing already is as um as users or customers very soon you no longer be customers or users, you become the business analyst, just like me. 
to be doing all this um, uh, requirement gathering and the rest of them, I might give you assignments to even go and generate um, your own um, requirements on how to improve. You see, uh, the way I've used the um, survey to generate my own um, requirement from your people, I might ask you to go and generate your own requirements. I don't know how you're going okay. to do it, but you're going to my uh, use survey. You might use, so that's how a business and all that's the ways of um, getting your requirements. Just like I say, requirements and business analyst is five and six. It's going to be our best friend. So if you if you don't like the word requirements, then you don't have a business being here. Okay, but it's going to make you a great person because the world is changing fast and this solution is uh, you are the one providing the solution to the changing world. Yeah. So I wish you a good night's sleep. Good night. All right, sir. Thank you. Good very night, sir. Night. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night.